The Lowry, for those that don't know, is um, a large arts venue, which is in um, Salford Keys, uh, near Media City. And uh, we have three theatres, we have a full art gallery, we do digital exhibitions, we have a full restaurant. Um, there's quite a lot going on and there's a lot of people who uh, make many things happen. Uh, some people might not be aware of. So uh, we will just do a quick uh, introductions with everyone, just so we know um, who's in the room. Uh, can we start with yourself, Matt? Is that right? Yeah, of course. Hello. Thanks, Fraser. Hello, I'm uh, Matthew Eames. I'm senior programmer producer at the Lowry, and that's for the theatres. So um, the Lowry has three theatres, and um, the Lyric, which is 1,700 seats, the Keys Theatre, which is 450 seats, and the Studio, which is 140 or 170 seats. Um, now, of course, that's completely different right at this moment, and maybe we'll come back to that later if you're interested. But for now, we'll stick with how it normally is. And my job alongside another is to bring, to go out and watch and to bring great theatre to those three theatres. And I predominantly focus on the studio and the keys programme and what we call our contemporary programme. All that means is it's kind of the new work, the, the, the very, um, the very, uh, interesting work that is lots of different styles of theatre all kind of meshed into one. Um, and that's my focus is to bring the, the very best of that to the Lowry and to Salford and to Northwest because we may be one of the only venues at this end of the country that can host that sort of that sort of work. So it's a great job. Um, no one's at you know, uh, you know, there's no there's no getting around it. I get to see lots of brilliant theatre. Um, and um, I get to, to share that with people and that's, that's often the, the, the best bit of the job is knowing that we've got a great piece of theatre coming and we can bring it to the Lowry. I also uh, produce um, by that, I suppose it kind of means bringing it all together. Um, the Lowry isn't a producing venue normally, it is um, a receiving venue, we bring shows in, um, but from time to time we do produce our own things, mainly through our uh, festival week 53 festival every two years where we we bring very new things we 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 pay artists and companies to make something new especially for our festival um, and i help to bring that together i, I kind of coordinate that and bring that together um, thank so that's you, me. yep thank you very much you are Aisha? sorry oh we used on mute Aisha. very sorry Oh, I have, yeah. I've <laughs> just put it on just in case my phone started beeping. Um, so hopefully you can hear me now. Uh, yeah, I'm Hayesha. I'm an actor, a drama facilitator, um, and I'm currently on Hollyoaks. Sorry, marvellous. Thank you, Hayesha. Uh, Michael? Good evening. I'll just unmute myself. Hello, I'm Michael. I'm Director of Visual Arts at the Lowry. Um, as Fraser said, the Lowry is, it's got these fantastic theatres that uh, Matt's just told you about. Um, and it's got a fantastic community programme as well, which works with the communities around, around us in Salford and beyond. And it's also got a really huge set of uh, gallery spaces where we put on exhibitions of paintings, digital art, sculpture, photography, pretty much anything um, contemporary as as Matt mentioned so work being made now or certainly in the recent past um, so we do that and alongside that we also have a collection of paintings by an artist called L.S. Lowry who you might have heard of who lived through most of the 20th century and we have Salford's collections of paintings by Lowry so we have a kind of permanent collection but we also have this great changing program of exhibitions um, and the great thing for me is I work with really creative people, artists, but also creative people within the Lowry as well. So um, very lucky. Marvellous, thank you very much. Uh, Steph? Hello. Um, so my name's Steph and I am a creative learning producer or a youth theatre producer, um, which is essentially doing theatre with young people. Uh, I work 
mostly outside of our building at the moment so I don't actually work a lot inside the Lowry I go out into the schools of Salford and connect really fantastic artists and facilitators with really brilliant young people to sort of make performance happen to learn new skills and to do something which I think is one of the most fun things in the world uh, which is performing and working together and um, so my project is is partly at the Lowry and partly sort of outside in schools uh, in Salford and at the moment I work with young people all the way from the age of 8 to 18. Marvellous, thank you very much. Uh, and then Dave, last but by no means least. Hi, uh, technical, always last. Um, <laughs> I'm Dave, uh, one of the technical managers here at Lowry. Uh, my job is to facilitate uh, all of the programme that Matt puts in the uh, free venues, Matt and Steve put in the free venues. My job is also to help with uh, things like uh, what Steph does with uh, the uh, stage, <laughs> what's it called? Um, Oh my stage, God, directions. My is... stage directions thank you fraser um uh, so so my job is to basically do all of the technical work and aspects of that work out risk assessments work out uh, lighting plans uh, stage plans all that kind of thing for that kind of, for, for our things that we we make with matt and steph i also help with visiting companies like at the moment we've got six in uh, hopefully we will have a show on the 19th but fingers crossed for that one Thanks. um <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I also work very closely with Matt on week 53 uh, because I, I generally get put on that to do the technical aspects of it and help out. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. And then there's millions of other roles in the building as well, besides these guys. Um, just so much going on. So the idea um, just of this morning is to really give a, a, an insight uh, into how people got into their roles, uh, what's involved, maybe um, their previous experience and if it's something they always wanted to do. Plus, we're going to um, open up if anyone wants to ask any questions. We won't do questions and answer at the end. If just anyone has a question throughout, you can just pop it into the chat box and I can um, throw it out there. Uh, however, uh, my first question I'm going to throw out to the panel is how did you get to where you are today? And is it the career you imagined for yourself um, when you were at school? Uh, and I don't know who wants to take that, but Michael, you've just unmuted yourself, so I feel like <laughs> I'm going to start with you. You've just nominated. So yeah, so if you could just answer where, um, how did you get where you were today? That'd be really interesting. Well, it's a, a long, circuitous route, but it, just taking your point about am I doing what I expected to do? Absolutely not, because when I was at school, I thought I wanted to be a librarian. I love books, so I thought I'll be a librarian. Sounds pretty easy. I'll do that. So. Uh, I needed, in order to be a librarian, I needed to get two E grades to get into university, and I got an E and two Fs. So uh, I failed spectacularly, just didn't, didn't get into university. Everyone was just horrified at how rubbish I was. And so I just, I just became unemployed. And then by chance, I ended up doing some voluntary work um, and some a little bit of paid work in the local in a museum and art gallery just fell in love with art never looked at art before never had any on the walls at home and just thought I really want to do this and the great thing for me is I had a great mentor and she pretty much bullied me into going back and retaking my A levels and then I kind of went on from there so um, it just goes to show uh that you you might think you're, you're heading somewhere but just be prepared for all sorts of different alleyways that you might end up going down uh -huh. and, um my advice is always be persistent and try and, and, and just keep going so i never knew that that's interesting i think yeah very few people have a master plan i think it just how it comes about um Aisha, can i just bring you in there i'd be really interested to um see if it's always something you really wanted to do and if it's um what you kind of planned on? Um, to be honest, I think, uh, uh, like Michael, I, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't. I, I knew I'd be in the creative industry, but I didn't know what. Um, I was really good at German um, in high school, and I used to dance as well. Uh, I kind of still do. I mean, I, I like to say I'm a professional dancer, but I don't have a degree for that. But I have a degree for acting, so, um, yeah, I kind of just fell into it um, there was this um, a workshop for this place called a young people's theatre workshop at the Royal Exchange and this was back in 2008 um, and I just sort of 
joined that, I signed up to it just by chance to see if I'd get in or not and um, I did and that's where it all started and I just fell in love with theatre um, and yeah, I've just been going ever since then and just getting my face out there, grafting, just doing anything and anything that I could do to build my experience um, and to just learn more about theatre, TV, everything in this industry. So yeah, yeah that's, where, that's where did it you Did you know anyone in that group, the Royal Exchange group, before you went or did you just go by yourself? No, no, I'd never, to be honest, I don't even really think I'd been in a theatre by that point either. Oh wow. Yeah, um, it was really something out of my comfort zone as well and my parents were really eager to, to take me out of my comfort zone and keep my mind occupied um, and to just keep doing that because I wasn't very well when I was younger so it was that was my coping mechanism but then something that I'd really loved so it, it really brought out something great I think. Um, well, that, that's brilliant and although we try and do it at Lowry is trying I think some people think maybe theatre is not for them or the arts aren't for them but we really do and try and encourage everyone it is for everyone. Uh, Dave just I don't want to make you last again I kind of bring you in and just to uh, maybe how did you get where you were today? Yeah yeah um, basically I, I did really badly at school like ridiculously badly at school and um, I spent a year out uh, I became a pizza chef at a pizza restaurant, bizarrely, and then I just decided I wanted to do something different. So I looked online on at courses. We're well, not online back then. It was uh, look through papers for courses, and I spotted a technical uh, theatre course at Oldham College. Uh, I went there. I uh, found out I was dyslexic when I was there, and that put a lot of a lot, a lot of ticks in a lot of boxes for me. That, that made me think actually I am more i am more intelligent than i thought i was because school sent me down a different path um i did my uh, my course uh, got a job at contact theater for young people's theater uh but straight out of college and just kept going from there really um ah uh, wow well, and did you know did you always want to go into theater is that something or is it no uh, basically, I, I was, I was, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was do, doing this job. I just kind of fell into working at a pizza place for some reason, uh, but I didn't like it, and I thought I, I need to do something better. And I, was always, I always had been a bit of a creative thinker. And when I found that technical course, and I was always, I was always when I was a kid, I was always taking my sisters, my sisters' uh, uh, Walkman to pieces, not my Walkman, my sister's Walkman, obviously, uh, to put it back together again to see how that worked. And it was that kind of, it interested me. So that fault finding kind of taking something to get part, put it back together again. Yeah. And it's, that's exactly what theatre is in, in technical. It's you're taking something apart, putting it back together again, making it work, finding yeah. create more creative ways to make it work and stuff. And that's really, yeah. like it. Can you still make pizza? That's what I want to know. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. That's all, that's all from, from, from scratch with dough and everything. Oh, good effort. Uh, Steph, what about yourself? Um, I sort of feel like I've always been destined to do this job because I think um, when I was at school, um, I had quite a tough time at school. And I, I, I sort of I really like my academic work, but kind of the social world of school was quite um, difficult for me. And so at the weekends, I went to a, a drama club, uh, which is where I sort of really connected with something and found a kind of a passion for theatre. And I think um, sort of because school during the week wasn't necessarily um, the most ideal time, I really sort of found my connection and found people that I really um, liked hanging out with at, at, at drama at drama club on a Saturday um, I really loved that work I, I stayed there for ages and ages when I was uh, growing up until I went off to university and um, they didn't do drama as a subject at my school so that sort of felt like a really important thing for me to, to keep on to sort of connect with my um, my love for theatre um, I did drama and English at university, um, but also whilst I was at university, I did loads of societies. And one of the societies um, I was part of like, ran a weekly workshop and, and I was started to be that person who ran the workshop and planned the workshop. So that was just kind of as a hobby at university. And then you sort of realise, oh, I think I'm quite good at this. I think, I think people like the sessions that I run. So after I graduated, I got a, a job back at my old school um, working with young people. And then you just sort of start to connect all these dots and you think, actually this was something that meant a lot to me when I was younger this is something that I sort of did for fun at university and now all of a sudden it's something I, I feel like I could actually get work in and, and become a professional in so I feel like there's been a lot of um, things leading me to this path and it's been really exciting to um, sort of do it 
as a hobby and then do it as a freelancer so being self-employed and working for lots of different organizations and now moving into the role that i'm in which is more about um the producing and, and kind of helping freelancers and helping young people be part of those experiences that for me when i was younger was so important yeah brilliant thank you uh, and then matt i could throw the same question out to yourself yeah <clears throat> well yeah i'll start where where you started really with um did i did i want to be or did i feel that i would be uh, in theatre and, and and no i i didn't i am um, not certainly not until i was maybe 16 17 i'd um i'd never been in the theatre uh, maybe two or three times with school trips until i did a school show um at 14 15 and and that def I suppose looking back on it, it definitely changed my life. And it wasn't that I wanted to be, I suddenly felt like I wanted to be musical. Uh, it was just that I had a really, really good time. And I guess I felt differently about myself because of the experiences that I had then. And um, and I, I was okay. I was good at school, good GCSEs. Did A-levels I definitely found harder. And I, um, I had a teacher who mentored me and definitely kind of took me uh, on one side and, and you know helped me and, and made it kind of financially possible for me to take some singing lessons um, so someone helped me with that and I did singing lessons and I kind of at that point it started to feel like well maybe I maybe I can just have it give it a go and give it a try and um, but again it wasn't a straightforward route I sang in holiday camps and entertainment parks first oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and you know that was a great time and then and then I managed I did an audition for a, a London drama school and and got in there and I spent a year there and got an agent and then I was in musical theatre from for, for 10 15 years so touring and and in West End shows and and that sort of thing so um and then even then you know it, it, it's not over and I suppose perhaps what I've always felt and perhaps something to take away from this that I think about is that it never stops you kind of con you know you and, and perhaps more so for younger people today than um than it was for me or, or any of us is that um you may not be in a role that um stays in one place for very long you might be moving across industries um and changing uh, things as you go um albeit I have stayed in theatre but I um and that that's been fantastic but I I have done different things throughout my life um through theater and and that's made it possible yeah yeah so, and you never might know what opportunities are going to come up do you just by taking on like one job and it can spin yeah. somewhere else yeah i've just had a really quick question um for um Haisha and seth has just touched upon what you were talking about is that would you encourage other young people to join a drama club to develop other skills like self-confidence even if they aren't looking into going into a career of acting or performing so i don't know Haisha, i don't know if i can yeah yeah of course yeah um 100 i would 100 percent um encourage young people to go to drama schools uh, drama clubs anything um i've been in so many that i feel like the manchester <laughs> theater scene is like oh she's back again um <laughs> but when i was at high school i i like i said before i started out at the royal exchange from then from i think it was 2008 to like seven eight years on and off i was doing project after project there just to build my experience um, I learned how to do a radio play. I learned about directing, about writing, which I still kind of do. Um, I learned so many different aspects. And the best thing was it really built my um, confidence. And I was a really, really shy person. Uh -huh. So I've never, I've never really speak to people. I've never go out my comfort zone and it really helped me. Um, and I think it's so important because it's life skills as well and working with different people and in this industry, especially for, as an actor you are going from job to job to job you don't have a base at the moment i do have a base because i'm on a continuing drama but you can go from job to job you can go from city to city and your job is constantly moving and you have to be so versatile to adapt to it constantly so yeah. um it's 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 so so important to do that i mean i did that and then i went to contact theater and then i did a drama class uh, with an acting class in manchester so i was always flitting between the two and then from that it was college to uni and then i got an agent and it was so i was doing about 10 different things that i couldn't even my mind was just <laughs> everywhere. That yeah was the best thing to do 
because right. as well auditions can just come in just like that so it is really important to to get in brilliant uh oh you've just muted it, is, it, it is that connection with other people as well sort of when you sort of realize that you can connect with lots of different people whether they're really similar to you or really different to you once you've got that kind of common goal of being creative together when you then go into your career you've interacted with such a wide variety of people you've understood how to work together with people on different things and the value of those connections when you're working on something creative together i think is really special and, and quite deep and those are things that you remember forever in terms of a lot of the people i went to drama club with they're not in the drama industry now but i remember those special connections and friendships that we made because we were working on something that we really threw our hearts and souls into so i think having that experience gives you a real lift as well and actually a good work ethic as well working as part of a team you know making connections and working together uh, just another question uh, matt might uh, might be able to answer this but uh, what do drama schools look for in uh, in an application or interview so any tips for success is the question yeah, I, preparation. Um, I'm, I'm sad to say, you know, it, you know, talent is one thing. Preparation is is something else. And and by that, it's not just kind of making sure that you know, you know, the obvious things. Um, and you know, like knowing your monologue or knowing your songs and knowing them inside out. Of course, you have to do that. But I think the preparation part starts earlier when you're trying to find the right things to do, so that it's the right things for you. Um, but it, it's also something interesting and different that, that says something different about you. Um, certainly in my experience, I don't think, so I, you know, someone told me the reason I got into drama school um, was, I, was I picked one piece um, and they thought that guy must have, you know, that boy must have something about them to choose that particular show. Uh, I because it just was less unusual, less usual, it wasn't obvious, it was completely different. Um, and whether I did it well, I, I'm sure I probably didn't, you know, looking back, but I think it, it just showed something else about me that was, that was different. And that's just about reading and, you know, yeah. getting to know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then another question that's come through as well is, um, uh, Michael might be able to answer this so along with Matt, what are you looking for when you bring in shows or art into the Lowry? So like what makes a good either exhibition or a show? So if Michael might be interested in the gallery think, side. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think it's slightly different for galleries because yes, in theatres, most of the things come in from outside, but in galleries, we make our own, show, own exhibitions and we approach artists and devise exhibitions together. But what I would say for me, it's about ideas. It's all about ideas. And for me, all my time, so much of my time is spent just thinking of ideas what would be good ideas who could you bring together what might be the mix that might make it work and what i'm really particularly looking forward to, for our artists or exhibitions that are going to help our visitors just think differently or think more about the world around them and particularly around their own feelings so for me the vital thing is i want people to come away from seeing a work of art or seeing an exhibition having felt something about it. So how does it impact? They, they might hate it and that's absolutely fine if, if they've got a sense of why they want to do it. But I really, I'm, really, I'm always looking for things that are going to affect people on an emotional level and, and really get them thinking long after their visit. Great, yeah, thank you. And Matt, from the programme inside, anything like shows? Yeah. Spot on with Michael's last point, you know, something that makes you think and feel um, and, and something new and different. Um, and, you know, you are kind of, taste does come into it, of course, like your own personal opinions about things. But, you know, when you're working for a big organisation like the Lowry, you've, you've kind of got, you've got a work, you've got a, a kind of a, a thing to work from. You, you know what you want based on what our audiences want and what we're kind of funded to do. So, um, so yeah, absolutely about how you think and feel. Um, but we also program for different reasons, you know, that we have big, big musicals and big shows. And sometimes, you know, we are trying to make sure that we can pay for all those wonderful, brilliant things that we, we can do that may not be quite so popular. So um, sometimes it is um, a kind of, of a quite a fine, almost a financial decision, um, but it is ultimately 
we would never we would never bring anything in that we weren't artistically happy with either so it has to kind of tick all the boxes it has to be brilliant and really popular and really great for people but if it helps us fund the rest of our program then all the better great um, and then dave uh, one for you here if young people are interested in the technical side of theater uh, is it possible to get work experience stroke apprenticeships and progress from there rather than gaining any formal qualifications um yes there is um currently at the moment we we at lowry are uh, in the partnership with uh, manchester international festival and access uh, uh access I can never remember the name of it, but it, <laughs> there's, no, there's, a college, there's a college involved with it as well that uh, we're, we're doing an apprenticeship. Uh, at the, currently, our apprentice is uh, been seconded to uh, Bolton Octagon because we haven't got any work for her um, because we're currently closed. Um, but you can go that route. There's, 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 uh, it's not just the Lowry that's involved with this, Royal Exchange are involved, uh, MMU have got an apprentice, Holmes got an apprentice uh so there, there is routes that way uh the, the, this is the first year of the apprenticeship which happens to fall on the pandemic year as well which is brilliant mm. but we we are hopeful in getting another apprentice when this apprentice has, has finished her, her time here um as regards to uh casuals and and uh, work experience like that we, we 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 do do work experience but it's mainly from a college perspective because our insurance doesn't cover anyone under the age of 18 in technical um there is other ways around it as well because I, I know that uh, steph's been working with stage directions to get a a technical uh side of things as well as the drama side of things so so that uh, students can can uh, look down that side of the technical side of things yeah um so, so yes there, there is there is there is ways in uh that way uh, also if 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 you don't want to go down the college route i mean you can start work as a casual when you're 18 and, and work your way in but you have to have a certain attitude and aptitude to that and be willing to listen and yeah no thank you the um what we could just following on from that then is um what entry level roles um are out there in theater like how could people get their foot in the door um if they aren't exactly sure what they want to do that's quite a bit broad question but i'm gonna throw that out to to anyone in fact, Steph, if you could. Yeah, I think just following on from what Dave was saying, uh, the project I'm working on at the moment, um, it sort of offers uh, traineeships um, to, to young people or people who are sort of early career in the arts, which is essentially a, a way to get experience of uh, and be paid for that experience of working with young people, um, whether that's in the technical group, like Dave said, working alongside the professional artists or in, in the schools themselves. So we're looking at that traineeship um, programme and, and hopefully we'll be growing that in terms of giving people experience that can work around their education as well. I think that's really important to sort of find opportunities that um that can work around school and, and college i think it's really difficult um but there's a lot of work in sort of the area that me and fraser work in in terms of sessions that get that run a lot that people could volunteer at um and, and make a connection with um with their local theaters or their local arts organizations i think um if it's something that you care about people will really see that in you and, and will want to offer you opportunities um, in, in those either entry level roles or voluntary roles um, or traineeship roles. Brilliant. And, and anyone else like in their respective departments, is anyone, you know, entry level jobs, what would be quite good to get involved in? I, I can, uh, on the gallery side, our entry level jobs tend to be around uh, inst helping to install exhibitions. Um, but also, uh, there's always a need for um, confident, bright, good organisers who, that's the perfect entry level job in, certainly in galleries, is to come in and be the person. So I might need a, a picture brought up from London. Well, I need somebody to help arrange that and to make phone calls and to organise deliveries and things like that. And it sounds a bit basic but it means you spend an awful lot of time talking to artists talking to other galleries um, and you're part of a team so it's it's uh, an entry level which is more about doing things and being a good organizer of things but it's always the first step into doing more curatorial work 
Yeah. So I did a lot of volunteering when I was younger and it was invaluable because I got to observe so much with lots of different people as well. And actually I had a good grounding in that, just watching how other people work. Um, Haisha, I've just got a question for you. Um, someone's asking, can you tell us a bit about what it's like working on a TV show and how to gain confidence in front of the camera? So yeah. Um, so at the moment, because of the pandemic and COVID, um, there's a lot of restrictions and filming is very different to what it was. Um, and we all keep praying that it will go back to normal, but this is the new normal. So we're adapting um, to new rules each week. Um, it's very fast paced. I mean, there's so much to tell you, but mm -hmm. um, in a nutshell, I could do a standard day. So I could start at 20 past seven in the morning, I could have a full day where I usually work about 11, 12 hours a day. Sometimes that can be five days a week, six days a week. It could be one day, two days, it, it varies. Um, and for example, I could start at that time and then finish at half six and then I'm back in again at the same time. Um, and I'll be in at that time, I will go straight into makeup, about half an hour, 40 minutes, do my hair and makeup, then at half eight, then you get changed, get into your costume and go on set ready for half eight. And then you film and then you'll have your lunch around lunchtime, 12, one o'clock. Um, and then you'll keep filming until about half six when the crew wraps. So it's very fast paced. Um, at the moment, because of COVID and our makeup artist can't come within two metres of us, we have to do our own uh, hair and makeup. Oh. So um, that's uh, a skill in itself because I <laughs> might, I can just about put my own hair in a bubble. So <laughs> to, do, to do my hair and makeup to a professional standard was really um, a task in itself. And um, like I said, acting is, is you're learning every single day. Um, so that was a, that was a new skill for me and that was a big challenge because I had some big scenes um, that I had to film a little while ago and my look was really elaborate and um, that was a skill because I had to prep for that ready for the day when it does come um, to, to actually film those scenes um, and to take my time to do my hair and makeup and everything so that was a skill. Um, but it's it's a great atmosphere. I mean, everyone is lovely on Hollyoaks, so it's it's a joy to be there and work there. Um, but it's great because you are constantly working with new people each time. Um, the cast changes all the time. You've got a freelance crew. You can um, you work with different directors, so you're always working with new people. You're always sort of testing the water what are you like am i going to get on with you are we going <laughs> to understand this are we going to have fun today we're we going to have a laugh so it's always a new experience and it's always great to keep building and to keep looking at different ways you can portray something um and yeah hopefully making great work that the audience do like Brilliant. Thanks for really insightful. Um, I'm aware of the time. I don't think we've got too much long, uh, longer left. So I'm just going to um, throw out as a, to start wrapping us up is, uh, well, it's kind of two questions. One is any practical advice that you've picked up over the years that really stuck with you, that you think might be really useful for people to hear. Uh, plus, what is the best thing about working at the Lowry? You can only pick one, although there's many. You have to pick one. Uh, go on, Matt. I'm going to bring you in on that. Okay, I'll start, I'll start with that. So the best thing about working at the Lowry is just that, that you know, the sheer possibility uh, and um, what a, an amazing building and platform. You know, you've got fantastic exhibitions, brilliant theatres, amazing programmes that we work with young people in community. So there's loads of different stuff, you know, and from a theatre's point of view, we can have national theatre in one day, we can have a Britain, we can have Britain's Got Talent in, we can have uh, um, one, of the, uh, one of the best stand-ups uh, in the world doing a, a big gig. We can have Paul Scholes and Ryan Giggs doing a, a, a book signing, you know, and we can have a brilliant musical like Six, uh, which we've got at Christmas. So there's so much possibility and every day is, is different. So that's the best thing. Top tips, um, you know, you, you, you've got to know what you want uh, and, and really work hard to achieve it. Um, it's, it's best if your aims are simple. I wanted to be an actor and I wanted to know about theatre and all I did and all I thought about was theatre and there, there wasn't much room for doubt um, and I, I was perhaps too young to think like that. Um, I was fortunate in that respect so I, I just, I read the stage every week. Um, you know, I, I, if I didn't know something about theatre I was really annoyed with myself uh, and, I'm, and, and that's kind of carried on to this, to this day really.
task. So it's just preparation and work, working hard. Great, thank you. Uh, what about yourself, Steph? Yeah, I think following on from that in terms of um, advice um, is just to really understand your why. So no matter what career you go into or what passion you follow, understand why that is important to you and why that connects with your values. Um, you know, and, and really know that you're going down a path that is something that you will always uh, want to care about and you'll sort of enjoy your work. I think one of the things someone said to me a long time ago is um, to be a work in progress for as long as you can. Um, so you never stop learning, you never stop changing and chopping and adapting. And there's never a point where in your career where you should feel done. I think you should always be striving to kind of do more. And if you do start in the theatre um, and like you say, you're not exactly sure what you want to do give something a go and don't worry if it doesn't work out just keep learning keep working um and i think that is that is actually the best thing about my job is that it's very different um at most days uh, i get to meet a lot of different people um and it's the idea that yeah i think when you're younger when you don't know something it is annoying but almost it's it's kind of something that you embrace now is the idea of like being able to learn from other people and, and move forward so that would be my main sort of um that is my advice and the best thing about my job. Brilliant, thank you very much. I was kind of hoping you'd say the best thing was working with me, but never mind, we'll move on. Uh, Dave, I can bring you in on that. Um, yeah. I was kind of pointing at me when Matt was saying, because the best thing for Matt working alone was working <laughs> with me. Obviously. Uh, it's all our favourite thing. Well, my favourite thing is the, 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 the variety of, of stuff we have because every day is different and that I couldn't do a nine to five job and this is definitely not a nine to five job. Every day is different, every day is unique. Uh, currently every day isn't because of the COVID thing, but every day normally is different and every day is normally is unique. Uh, my advice uh, would be never be, never be afraid of asking questions and never be afraid of uh, asking for help, uh, mainly because I see a lot of young technicians struggling and they 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 are they they're trying to prove themselves when really they should just be asking that question and, and bettering themselves that way. Everyone's here uh, for for the same thing, so no one's going to be fighting you if you if you if you're stuck. Ask. Really, thank you very much. Uh, and Haisha, any uh, practical advice or um, uh, best things suppose, about working where you are? Um, I just say just build up as much experience as you can go to the theatre when when the theatres are open go and see live shows go and get experience and just have a look at what you like and that's a start you know have a look if there's if there's an artist that you like somebody that you inspire uh, look at what they've done look at where they started just build your confidence your research just keep reading looking at um different theaters anything that's online um but just anything and everything and don't be afraid because if you are not sure about something that's great because you're doing something that's like, oh, this is new to me. All right, let me see what I can do or what I can get out of this. And then you never know where that can lead. That's true. So it's always great to, to take a risk as well. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, and then finally, Michael. Um, uh, I'll pick up on how you, what Haisha said in a way, really, in that my practical advice is to see as much as you can see, watch as much as you can watch, listen to as much as you can listen to, um, just you'll know what you like but test yourself try lots of different things so you've got you've got the, watch good things on the television watch weird things on youtube listen to podcasts look at art i get as inspired by rupaul as i do by renaissance painting so it's ju just be as broad as you possibly can and creative people will always inspire you i hope um and in terms of the best thing about working at larry well, I, I would say it's working with creative people all the time, artists, yes, but also um, at the risk of, of sucking up to my colleagues, it's working with creative people around me. So everybody at the Lowry finds creative solutions to things. And Dave quite rightly says about don't be afraid to ask and talks about young technicians. I'm 59 and there's still things that I'm just a rubbish at and what <laughs> I learned. Uh, Dave's absolutely right is to say help so I my colleagues in my team or you know can you help me do this and when you start working as a team 
uh, and understanding where you need help that that makes a huge difference brilliant thank you uh, i think that's pretty much all we've got time for fortunately even though i have a million other questions i would um love to know i think just following up from you michael and pretty much everyone else as well um one thing that I, i've learned myself and then chatting to other people is that um if you're waiting for the right time it'll never come there never is a right time and if also you wait until you feel ready that never happens as well i think no matter where you are in your career or where no matter what point in time just starting out or well established you never feel ready you know doing new things always just stretches you and pushes you so you're never ready for it it's just the next step um if anyone does have any um questions or any um follow-up or would just like to find out a little bit more about how to get involved in the lowry we do have um an email get creative at the lowry.com and that's for you people who are interested in getting involved um in especially at the lowry um, so people feel free to uh, email that otherwise thank you everyone for chatting to us um it's been a pleasure i've learned things today which i didn't know about you guys which is great um but this is uh, we'll sign off there uh, and thank you very much everyone see you soon <laughs>